We got word today of the alleged torture of young boys at the hands of ISIS terrorists in Syria. Human Rights Watch says 150 boys were abducted on their way to school exams. Some said they were beaten with electric cables because they're from a religious minority. This year, ISIS seemed to come out of nowhere as it grabbed about a third of Iraq and Syria. But where did ISIS start? Clarissa Ward has traced its roots back to a U.S. military prison. Camp Buka was known as the largest and one of the toughest American prisons in Iraq. We need a letter. As a vicious insurgency raged across the country, Buka's numbers swelled. But there is growing evidence that the sprawling prison was also the birthplace of ISIS. According to a CBS News investigation, at least 12 of the top leaders of ISIS served time at Camp Buka, including the man who would become the group's leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. We obtained photos of 10 of them in Buka's yellow prison jumpsuits. At the time, few predicted that Baghdadi would become one of the world's most wanted men. He spent only 10 months at Camp Buka for an unknown crime. But during his time there, he would have rubbed shoulders with some of the most dangerous Islamic extremists. I think it's undeniable that one of the main causes of ISIS's explosive growth after 2010 was Buka. It's where they met, it's where they planned. Patrick Skinner is a former CIA case officer who spent time in Iraq. Everybody could see what was happening, but nobody could do anything about it. U.S. officials who worked at Buka told us they were concerned that prisoners were becoming radicalized. The prison has been described as a pressure cooker for extremism. And that wasn't the only problem. It was at Buka that an unexpected and powerful alliance was formed between the Islamic extremists and the Ba'athists loyal to Saddam Hussein, who were angry at losing power. You put them together and you get a mixing of organized military discipline with highly motivated, highly active ideological fervor, and the result is what we see today. I mean, there, there were other circumstances, but the toxic brew of Buka started this recipe. And Clarissa Ward is joining us now in London. Clarissa, if the United States knew this was happening inside the prison, what did the military do to stop it? Well, Scott, the U.S. did set up a rehabilitation program at Buka to try to combat extremism, but some who worked there have said that really it wasn't implemented effectively. And at that time in Iraq, there was a state of complete chaos, some 100,000 prisoners being held across the country. And the U.S. was really focused on the insurgency. They weren't necessarily thinking of the future. Clarissa Ward reporting from our London newsroom tonight. Clarissa, thank you.